let's go a little bit back to the tech, the topic of older tech, right? So there's the iPhone XS and the Apple Watch uh, Series 4. So I have it here and I have my iPhone in my pocket. So I have the 44 millimeter space gray aluminum Apple Watch Series 4. That will run you around the $230 to $249. Of course, that can go up to $320 depending on the condition you want. I was able to get mine for $237 from a place called Back Market. I'm not sponsored, sadly, but go check them out. I will leave a link below just because I'm feeling nice today. Um, so, of course, that's in good condition. It has like one or two scratches. The uh, rotating bezel, or what should I call it, the digital crown, has a little weird coloring on it, but other than that, we're doing pretty well. Um, so let's talk about the Apple Watch. Let's compare the Series 4 to the new Series 6. And I have a couple list. I have a list of things that are changed, and we'll go through them one by one. Of course, there are um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, or sorry, there are 10 big areas these two watches differ, and they are display, storage, Wi-Fi, uh, other sensors, uh, some chips that are in it, a battery size, charging, and of course price. That's really just um, eight things that are different between the Apple Watch um, Series 4 and the Apple Watch Series 6. Of course, I'm not telling you which one you should get, but I am telling you the differences so you can discern on your own which Apple Watch is best for you, if you even need an Apple Watch. But assuming you're watching this video, you're either curious or you're thinking about getting one down the road. So let's break these categories down and then we'll do a little side-by-side -side comparison towards the end. And then we'll answer the question that you're all dying to know, should you still buy the Apple Watch uh, Series 4 in 2021 when the Apple Watch Series 7 is right around the corner in September or October? Um, of course, Techtober and Techtember are coming up very soon, and we're so excited to see what's happening. I'll try and keep you guys up to date on what's coming, but we never really know. We just know based on leaks that stuff is coming. There may be redesigns. We never know. Sorry, my battery died on my main camera. Um, so, of course, we never really know what's going to come around, but we know leaks. We know rumors. But with that being said, let's get into the uh, specs that are different. Okay, so let's talk about the display. Of course, the displays are the same size. However, there are different features between the Series 6 and the Series 4. Um, yeah, so the Series 4 is the last generation of the Apple Watch that had 3D Touch. If you remember, 3D Touch was their haptic, not really haptic, more of a third dimensional touch um, option on iPhones, on iPads not really iPads, more iPhones and Apple Watches for the past years. That was done away with on the iPhone 11 Pro and the Apple Watch Series 5. Of course, that was brought back, that was not brought back, but it was replaced with haptic touch, which is more of a time sensitive, pressure sensitive, not so much pressure, but more time sensitive um, touch system. Um, of course, that did allow for the watches to be slightly thinner phones as well. Not really noticeable, not really something that should discern whether you should get the Apple Watch Series 4 or the Apple Watch Series 6. I do, personally don't care. I like 3D Touch because it's faster as opposed to waiting on that microsecond for it to be like, okay, you've waited long enough. I'll go ahead and give you that menu now. That's something that has bothered me a little bit, but not really um, looking at new tech versus older tech. Um, it's one of those things that you pay you pay the consequences over for the price of technology advancing over the years. Um, so course that's been changed for haptic touch um, the other big one is the always on display the series 4 was the last Apple watch aside from the new Apple watch SE to not feature an always on display the series 5 has it and now the series 6 has one that's 30% brighter I'm sure this is taking quite a hit on battery because if you look at the actual capacities the battery is smaller it's around 296 million hours as opposed to the 306 or the 302 or the 4 298 I believe on this series uh, 3 4 and 5 uh, those are not in the correct order. I'll put them up on the screen now. But it's these little things that they're making this battery smaller, claiming the chip is so much more efficient. They don't need to keep these bigger batteries. But that's something I know I am wishing they kept was the bigger batteries, like on the iPhone 11 Pro Max, where it had a 3,948 milliamp hour battery. But now they're going back down to the 2,865 or thereabouts, claiming the chip is so efficient it doesn't need a big battery. Personally, I don't care how efficient the chip is. I want a big battery so I know my phone will last a full day, and mine does not. Uh, granted, it is a phone from 2018, but granted, it should still last. I've been through four batteries. It's not good. Okay, so um, the next big area is storage. Uh, the iPhone, or the iPhone, I'm sorry, the Apple Watch Series 4 comes with 16 gigs. The iPhone, the Apple Watch Series 5 came with 32, and the I Apple Watch Series 6 also came with 32. It's crazy to think that um, 
phones used to start with 32 and 64 gigabytes of storage. What's going to happen next? Our, our watch is going to start having 128 gigs of storage. It's absolutely insane. It's ludicrous. What watch needs 32 gigs of storage? I know music is a big reason they do it, but still, it's absolutely insane. So storage is a big one. Okay, so let's talk Wi-Fi. That was another area that's changed quite a bit. And what has changed? Well, they have dual band now, as opposed to just having the 2.5 gigahertz band, and it's both the 2.5 and the 5 gigahertz. And of course, that'll give you the faster speeds of the 5 gigahertz while keeping the better extended range of the 2.5, allowing it to bounce back and forth with lower latency on the 5, but better range and dependability on the 2.5. So that's something that the Apple Watch Series 6 has that the Apple Watch 5 or 4 does not have. Something that doesn't matter to you? I don't know. But for me, um, it doesn't really matter because I'm using it around my phone and I just let it piggyback off my phone's data. Um, of course, that does impact if you're not around your phone a lot. Um, so let's talk about sensors. And I have a little list here, so I'm just going to go and read off this list. Uh, the Series 6 does have more sensors than the Series 4 and the Series 5. They're constantly pushing that boundary of health. And this is really evident with the Series 6 as well as the Series 5. And even the Series 4 from the Series 3, every year they push the boundary. And so this year they added a lot of features that were not on the Series 5 or the Series 4, and who knows what they'll add this fall. So let's talk about what they both have in common, and then we'll go to what um, is new on the Series 6 versus the Series 5 or Series 4. So they both have accelerometers, gyroscopes, and barometers. That's really where the similarities stop because as time progresses, sensors progress, and they get more advanced, of course. Okay, so the Series 6 has the third generation heart rate monitor, whatever that means. Really all that means is it's in a different layout on the back, supposedly giving you a more accurate, more constant reading that's more reliable and dependable for heart irregularities. Um, it also has now, the Series 6 also has an always on altimeter, which is great if you do a lot of outdoor working out. So for like hiking, for example, um, it will keep that much more accurate as opposed to it not doing it all in the Series 4 or the Series 5. The Series 5 did do it a little bit, just more through GPS and compass. Um, the Series 6 though will be able to actually do it with a full on altimeter, which is very cool to see happening. Um, it's great for hiking, you know. So also with this health in um, in mind hiking a barometer is also now in the series six so you'll be able to know uh, you know changes in the weather if it if it thinks the storm's coming up all that kind of fun stuff um, or the ending of said storm really um, so going along with this outdoor theme there's also a GPS like I mentioned in the series six which is I mean if you want to call an Apple watch an outdoor watch be my guest I will never consider an outdoor watch I have a Garmin instinct if I want to do a lot more outdoor stuff I have an Apple Watch while I'm in the office, while I'm working day to day taking pictures for my job. Um, so yes, these are features that are on the Series 6 to make it more of an outdoor watch. A couple years ago, Apple patented um, and put some patents in for a more ruggedized Apple Watch. We'll see if that ever comes to play. I think that would be very cool if they did that this fall. I would jump on it immediately. Would I buy it? Probably not, but I would love to get my hands on one just to play around with it. Um, so the last sensor that is very interesting that they added was um, the pulse oximeter and a blood oxygen max sensor, basically checking how much oxygen is currently in your blood and what the max and lowest you have in your blood as of late. Um, this is great for people who have low oxygen in their blood, obviously, but it's also good just to see how like your body is processing the air you're intaking. And of course, I'm not saying this is going to save a life. But noticing irregularities in your blood oxygen could be something you might want to mention to your doctor, of course. Um, yeah. So as you can see, they really crammed features in the new Apple Watch. Some that are more health oriented, some that are more fitness, some that are more like Apple Watch oriented, really like the brighter always on display. Um, but the question really is, do you need it? And that's a question I have to ask myself. That's why I bought a Series 4 over a Series 5, because one, it was cheaper, and two, I didn't need the features the Series 5 gave me over the Series 4, and I don't need the, seri the um, features the Series 6 gives me over the Series 5 over the Series 4. I'm fine with the Series 4. I don't know about you. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about the chips they have. The new Series 6 has the new Ultra Wideband chip, so that will allow the watch to act as car keys, to use the uh, Find My app on iPhones better, course I'll also allow for the um, little Apple um, chips what are they called the um, Apple tags 
that will be able to give you more of the directional thing that comes with the iPhone 11 Pro, <laughs> the iPhone 12 Pro Max, and all those features to help you find more directional to know exactly how far you are away from one of your lost items. Very cool feature. I'm not sure how much I would implement into my own personal life, but it's there if you want that kind of thing. Um, so with all these features, you'd think they'd need a bigger battery, right? Well, you would, but the battery is actually downgraded. And I was mentioning this earlier, but here's the exact numbers. Um, it actually went um, from, it actually got a little bigger, but not considerably considering the features they're cramming in here. They're constantly on, constantly using battery, right? It went from 292 to 304. And while this is a lot, it's still not that much comparison in comparison to other things. It's hardly an upgrade with such a small battery already and all the features they're trying to cram in all right and of course the new apple watch came in colors comes in blue and red as well uh, those are aluminium as opposed to the other colors it always comes in so that's really what's new with the apple watch and there's a lot of things going for it with the new apple watch but is it things you really need is it really better is it really beneficial to you as a daily user or is it just bad is it bad news for a series four um so here's I wrote down some noticings I've had with my Series 4 and my Series 5. I've had a lot of Apple Watches. I've had the Series 1 for a couple months. I've had a Series 5. I've had a Series SE. And now I'm back to the Series 4. And what I've noticed over the time of having the 4, 5, and SE is that battery life never really changed except from the Series 5 with that always on display. That tanks my battery. And while I sit in an office so I can take my watch off and charge it now, I don't think the battery is that much worse. I can go through night, it dips like 6%, but it's also monitoring my sleep. And while that is a 6% decrease in my battery that I'll have to charge up the next day, it's really not that bad comparison in comparison to what it goes down during the day. And so battery life is really the same. Now, weight. It is a, the new watches are a little bit heavier due to these sensors. Is weight really an issue when it's on your wrist? It, they're already so lightweight. Does it really matter? And to me, the answer is no. The answer may be different for you, of course. Um, it doesn't have an always on display. Is this something that matters to you? It isn't to me. I mean, they're so responsive with like on, it's on instantly. And that's never something that's been a bother. It's like, oh man, I really wish my watch was on right now. I can just flip it, look, and saving that extra battery is something that I don't have to worry about the battery dying later because of that always on display. Oh man, I wish I'd turned that off right now. Um, yeah. And so before I move on to the phone, I'm going to take a little bit look comparing it. I have some notes here about comparing it to like the older watches and the newer watches and comparing the really old like the Series 3 to something like the Series 6. And so I have a couple of those features here. So if you have a Series 3, I'm going to say upgrade because it has the older small display. These have the new 30% larger displays, both the Series 4, Series 5, Series 6, and Series SE, and the soon to come Series 7 supposedly. Um, so if you have this old like a 3 or a 2 or a 1, you, it's definitely time for an upgrade. Um, they're not going to be supported much longer. A watchOS 8 only goes down to the Series 3 right now. And so the next update, watchOS 9 next fall uh, 2022, that you will be kicked off. And most likely the Series 4, this is probably the last update for it as well, though it might get um, watchOS 9. We'll see. Um, yeah, so of course the Series 4, like I mentioned, have the newer screens. And... If you really care about fitness, you could get the Series 6, or I would just recommend waiting until this fall to look at the Series 7, see what that offers, see if that's stuff you need. Because again, when the new watch comes out, of course the older watch, the Series 6, 5, and 4, those will go down in price by probably around 10, 20%. And that price decrease is so beneficial and something to jump on because then you can get a year newer tech for a lower price. And it's really not that bad, a big of an issue uh, when you're looking at your finances then. Um, yeah, so performance-wise, I mean, I, like I said, I've had a 154 in the SE. Performance-wise, not really crazy different except on the 1 and the uh, 5. Uh, and the 5 really wasn't a performance increase. It was just a battery decrease in efficiency and how much worse the battery lasted with that type of technology with the always-on display. And while that isn't really an issue, it stand, still can be a slight issue down the road if that's something you worry about. Um, yeah, so that's really all I have to say on the Apple Watch. Now let's turn our attention to the iPhone SE. I'm sorry, not the iPhone SE, the iPhone XS. Okay, so where do I start? Oh boy, I've not had a good experience with my iPhone. Like I've said, I've been through four batteries. Um, it is supposedly the third worst iPhone they've ever released for battery. The first one being the iPhone, the new iPhone SE, followed by this phone. No, followed by the iPhone 6, pardon me, and then down to the iPhone XS. And while the battery is not bad by any means, it's not good either. I can't last a full day on a charge. Even when I first got it, it wasn't lasting a full day on a charge. And it's just disappointing at this point, you know? 
And so I would consider it a win that my phone has lasted this long because I treat my phones very roughly. I don't throw them around, but also I expect it to last. And so screen protectors, uh, rugged cases, those are all things I will put my phone in because I'm not going to handle it with kid gloves. Because, I mean, I'm a photographer. That doesn't really have anything to do with how I handle my phone. But even before that, bike rides, rock climbing, rappelling, hiking, it's these things that if I fall, I want to know my phone's going to be okay and I don't have to worry about that constant fear. Um, yeah, and so I can't even get a half a day on my phone battery right now. My battery health is 94%. I'd put it more at 60%. Of course, I don't know how bad 60% really is, but knowing how badly my phone battery lasts, I'm going to put it more at the 60% as opposed to the 94 it's claiming. Um, yeah, so charges horribly slowly. This is before they updated to faster charging. Of course, I've also tasted the sweet mana of, you know, 30-watt uh, wireless charging, 30-watt wired charging, and just insane going from that back to an iPhone and be like, wow, why do I have a 12-watt charger right now? Um of course, with I could put a faster charger on it, it wouldn't charge any faster. The new iPhones only charge at 20 watts, which is still very disappointing for me, a tech enthusiast who's like, there is a phone that phone Huawei is testing that has um, 200 watt wired charging, and it's insane. It goes from zero to 100 in eight minutes. Is that actually ever going to be a reality? Most likely not, but it's one of those things that you have to keep in mind going down the road when iPhone is staying so far behind the compet competition. I mean, Samsung's charging at 20 watts. Um, iPhones are charging 15 watts. OnePlus is charging at 90, 86 watts. It's these things that other phones are doing that iPhone is falling so far behind. And it's just disappointing looking at it, you know? Okay, so let's talk a little bit about straight into specs, right? Okay, so the, I have it right here. The iPhone XS has 4 gigs of RAM as opposed to 6 on the iPhone 12 Pro. What does that really mean in the real world? Better multitask. You'll be able to swipe up, go to your recent apps, go all the way back, open one, and it won't have to reload the app, whether it's a web-based or... Uh, phone based app um, of course the display is slimmer uh, dimmer with a lower pixel density not that much but when you have an iPhone 12 Pro that has a 1200 nit monster screen uh, and you're looking at the 620 nits on an iPhone 10s it's disappointing when the other phone is literally twice as bright um, which is great for outdoors of course um, and the like like that uh, of course the screen has been pushed more to the edges on the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro Max so the current 5.8 inch screen on my phone has been pushed to a 6.1 inch in the exact same phone footprint. <coughs> yeah, and uh, it also gets two more pixels per inch. Not that crazy. Again, I'm going to attribute that to the um, bigger uh, display ratio that's been pushed to the edges. Of course, the, the new phones did lose the legacy 3D touch that my phone does have. Again, going back to the Apple Watch we talked about earlier. Of course, my phone is a little slower. Processors are a little slower, lower clock speeds. The new iPhones are being pushed to a 3.1 gigahertz clock speed on their cores, which is absolutely insane. To think some laptops still don't even reach that, it's absolutely crazy and mind-blowing. Um, yeah, and so, of course, the cameras are better. They have bigger sensors, better light. Uh, sensor shift like I've mentioned earlier and also on the iPhone 12 Pro Max the aperture is now a 1.6 versus the old 1.8 and to get a 1.6 on a smartphone that's kind of crazy knowing how thin they are and the distance you need between the sensor and the lens and all the other fancy stuff that goes in there to get a 1.6 aperture which is crazy um, of course the iPhone 12 Pro does has five does have 5g some of the fastest 5g in a smartphone uh, mine is stuck on 4g LTE um, not that crazy, not that detrimental, but it is something to be considered. Um, yes, so the iPhone 12 Pro, uh, along with the iPhone 11 Pro, they both have Wi-Fi 6, the next generation in Wi-Fi. Mine is stuck on the 2.5 and 5 gigahertz, not that new 6 gigahertz Wi-Fi speed. Something that some people have added to their houses already, some people have also, some people have also not. Um, so that's one of the things you need to consider. Does your office offer something like that? Does your house already have it? Is it something you need to be worried about? Personally, me, no. I'm currently in a place where Wi-Fi is not the least a concern, which makes my job very hard. Um, of course, battery is not a very interesting story either. It's a small cell, to be sure, at only 28, 15 milliamp hours in a world where there's phones 
that are commonly getting 4,000 to 6,000 milliamp hour batteries. It's disappointing to see the newer phones are still only at this 2,800 milliamp hour battery. Of course, they claim it's fine, blame it on the chips, say it's oh so efficient, but we all know Apple and we all know they skimp on batteries. It's disappointing. That's why the iPhone 11 Pro Max was the best lasting iPhone pretty much to ever exist, getting around 10 hours and 48 minutes on battery test if you look some up. I'll link a couple below. Um, yeah. And of course, there's MagSafe charging. Oh, wow. You can magnet on the back and charge at 15 watts wirelessly instead of the normal 5G wireless that has been the norm for iPhones forever um, since they've been doing it. And so it's these little features that they claim is the new bleeding edge of technology, but in reality, it's not really that really adding that much to the experience. It's not adding that much to the phone in and of itself. Is it really worth upgrading? And that's a question I can't answer for you. It's something you're going to have to answer for yourself. And this is sad because, I mean, MagSafe seemed so cool, but then they capped it at 20 watts. And we have phones that are charging wirelessly at 86 watts. We have phones that are charging wirelessly at 100 watts, 68 watts. And for them to only be charging 20 watts wirelessly is very disappointing to see. Um, it's sad. Mediocrity is everywhere. And Apple just stooping down to that kind of level. It's just disappointing. Of course, it's Apple. They're at the bleeding edge. They're like, they have such a big market share. They can do it. It's just disappointing to see, honestly, for so many people. So, do you need an iPhone 12 Pro Max? Or are you good with what you have? Would the 10s be fine can you wait until the 13 comes out can you wait this isn't a 13 this is my 10s can you wait the longer you wait the better phones are going to get but also if you need a phone now buy a phone now because phones are only going to be as good as they are right now and if you're always waiting 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 until the newest phone comes out with the newest specs there's always going to be another phone around the corner with even better specs and so personally i would never get the 10s right now but if that's what you can afford, get it. It's going to be fine. I would recommend the XS Max with a bit of a better battery life. But if that's what you need, get it now. If you can afford a little more, get an 11 Pro. If you can afford even more, get a 12 Pro. Heck, if you can afford a $1,000 phone, wait until the iPhone 13 or the 12S or whatever they call it comes out and buy it then. But these little features that do you really need them and do you need the newest phone? So with that being said, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed the new quality. Hope you enjoyed the new format. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, I will catch you guys in the next video. Be sure to comment down below, right below that like button, what you liked about the video, what you want to see in an upcoming video. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Stay safe. It's a scary world out there. Don't do drugs. And don't I'll take candy from a stranger. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Stay smart. Stay curious and stay creative. Bye.